Hey everybody, Scott Tetweiler here. And now that you have Stable Diffusion installed, hopefully installed locally, and you're running it, and it's running great, let's fine tune it with a little touch. Uh, that's called a VAE, or a Variational Autoencoder. Now there's one already built into the checkpoints that you already use, your 1.4 or the new 1.5 models. But there's also a new version of the 1.5 VAE available from Stability, directly from Stability. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to add this to your automatic 11.11 or whatever local uh, model you're using, and you can turn that on. Now, it's not going to make huge differences, but little differences, mostly in things like eyes, hands, faces, things like that. Little tiny changes, but again, everything we can get, we'll take, right? So this is not hard to install, but there's a little bit of a trick to it, uh, and it can save you a lot of time if you found, kind of follow the cheat for it. Uh, so I'm going to show you the formal way to install it, and then I'm going to show you the kind of tricky way to kind of get away with making it a lot easier. Uh, so it's very easy to do. This is a future me inserting this in the video here uh, because I totally forgot to mention it. If you do a lot of image to image work where you're trying to go from image to image using the previous image as a point of departure uh, for video loops and animations and so on, you probably notice this magenta shift. This gets rid of or really helps to control a lot of that. So before we get into installing this thing, which is relatively easy, let's talk a little bit about what to expect because you may be like, wow, this is going to change everything. Um, it does not. It does add some minor nuances and improvements, uh, but uh, not a ton of them, mostly in minor details like, say, faces, uh, some in text and fingers, uh, but uh, not, again, giant changes like we need to see. But again, this stuff is moving so fast, uh, we'll take anything we can get. So I'm over here on the Hugging Face official uh, for Stability AI, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually be working with this one here. It's the this file, it's got the MSE in the name. So if we click on it, if we scroll down here, we're going to end up scrolling right past the file link that we need to use to download the file. So it is on this page. This is really what we're looking for. So it's got three different signs here. And we're looking at the middle one is what we're going to be installing. Uh, so this is your original, so this is your original here. And then this is the EMA version. And this is the MSE version. So again, you can see some minor little changes and nuances, not big ones. Uh, same with the face here in the middle. All three are terrible, but this one's less terrible. Um, the best example is probably this guy here. Like this has got, I don't know what's going on here. This looks a little bit better. Uh, and the name on the sign. So I did my own test locally here instead of Photoshop. And I don't worry about the prompt or anything. We're just going to show you the before and after here. So this is the, uh, this is actually the before here. And this is the after. So some of the shading in the face is more accurate. And the catch lights are in both eyes. Uh, so you may prefer one over the other. You may go like, wow, I really like the original one. Um, and that's, that's up to you. Um, here is the difference. So these are the actual pixels that have changed between the two. So you see quite a bit in the hair, the eyes, and the lips, but the rest of the image is pretty much untouched. Going to my next example here, I've got this face, and uh, this is the before, and this is the after. And you see a significant change in the flowers at the top. So again, if we look at the difference in the pixels that have changed between the two, it's mostly, again, the eyes, the lips, and some of the flower details. And my last example is this one. Again, we see a shift in the face a little bit, the eye uh, and the hair. And if we look at the difference between the two, you can see that most of the shift, again, has ha happened around the lips and the eyes. Uh, so it is enough of a change to, uh, to make it work for me. <laughs> I need to get every little, uh, I could say, every little plus I can get on my side. Uh, so how do we install this? It's actually not difficult. Okay, so let me show you what you're going to have to do first. So I'm in my Stable Diffusion, my local install, and we keep all of our models in the same place, right? We're keeping nice and organized. And then in here, you see this is Stable Diffusion folder. In here is where I have placed that VAE that I downloaded from the Hugging Face site that we were just at. Notice it's not huge compared to the rest of the models in here. And it will also download with a different name. It may end with CKPT. That's okay, just rename it so it's just .pt. You wanna do that so it does not show up in the Stable Diffusion interface, but we only want it to show up here as the VAE. Now, what you can do is, if you'd like to be uh, very accurate about it, what I would do is just copy the name from your existing checkpoint and rename this to that. It should end with .vae. PT. Once you've done this, it will now load the VAE with the checkpoint. Now this works great and this VAE will actually work just fine on some of these older versions as well. Uh, so it's valuable to have it around, but we would have to rename it and copy it and rename it and copy it, uh, which is kind of ridiculous. 
So let's undo that. And let me show you the right way to do this is we're going to edit that sacred bat file. So this is that one file you're allowed to edit. Um, we edited this on the install. So if you remember our install video, uh, we played with this file. And what we did is we added the get pull and the pause at the top. In this case, we're going to add this. So uh, we're going to replace the old command line. And what I did is I put the word rem in front of it, which stands for remark. And uh, here's the one that, so I was testing. I was oh, changing it, restarting, changing and restarting so I could do the before and afters. Uh, so now all you have to do is put in the command line, you put the dash dash VAE dash path space a quote, and then the path, which should look exactly like this pretty much. In fact, your line should be pretty much this exact line um, because I haven't altered my setup or configuration. And then a close quote at the end. And that's all you need to do. So once you save this and closed it, when you launch it, you will see a change. So the first thing it's going to do is to get pull. It looks like there's an issue going on with a, a recent change in the code, uh, but that's okay. I mean, that's uh, not really our concern, uh, but it tried to pull some things and had an issue. Uh, so they're probably in the middle of something and that's fine. You see here is loading web UI with the argument. You see that it has loaded the argument. We'll wait for it to confirm that it has loaded that VAE. Not that you need to look through all this stuff, but it is handy to see it and to get to know what it is saying. It's loading the 1.4 checkpoint, which I was working on. But the nice thing about having it in this file here is it knows that this VAE is going to be used for all of your checkpoints that have been loaded. So we don't have to worry about the name. And there we go. We see that it is that's scrolling up too fast here. So we see that it has successfully loaded the VAE weights. So all we had to do was see this line and know that we're good to go. Now, no matter what we switch to, it will still work. And you see all these embeddings I've been loading. I've been playing around with embeddings quite a bit. We'll be doing a video on that pretty soon here as well. So the next time that you run the Stable Diffusion local install, it's just going to work. Uh, there's nothing you need to change, no little settings to adjust. It will always switch to that VAE. No matter what model you load, it will always use that one as the best point of departure. And that should work really well even on the 1.4 checkpoint. So it's a better version. So we'll just keep that up to date. We'll always keep checking for new variational autoencoders and attaching those using this method again from that notepad from that command line I think is a lot easier than going through and copying it and renaming it to have it be the same for all those other files anyway so that's my tip for today uh, go ahead and do that and again it's small changes but again every little thing helps and in the long run it helps us just make better work right everybody take care stay safe and I'll catch you all next time